Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I consume. My motion to instruct the conferees would be in favor of the Senate language as it relates to freight and goods movement. It would authorize a national freight plan, national surface transportation and freight policy, and port infrastructure development initiative. We've all heard that the conference report is close to being filed, and I've also heard that the Senate freight provisions are not in the final agreement. I wanted to come to the floor tonight and make one last attempt to ensure that our country has a national freight policy. Madam Speaker, the Port of Los Angeles is in my backyard, and when I was on the City Council in Los Angeles, I focused on transporting the goods that arrive in the port to the rest of the nation. And when I came to Congress almost a year ago, I was surprised that there was not enough attention on our ports, and I was surprised that we didn't even have a ports caucus. So I co-founded the Bipartisan co uh, Port Caucus with my good friend uh, Ted Poe from Texas to educate uh, the rest of our members on the importance of our ports and goods movement to our nation's economy. So first, for those who don't know what goods movement is, I'd like to talk about why it's crucial for our nation. We're a consumer economy, whether it is a mom and pop store on the corner or a large retailer like Target. We don't think twice when we go to these stores to purchase groceries, toys for our children, or clothing. When we go to the store, we expect that the milk and the Barbie dolls are on the shelf. Simply Goods Movement is transporting products, whether they are made in America or imported through our nation's ports, to retail stores. The goods that are transported throughout the country uh, are transported by freight rail, trucks, and in some cases, waterways. The efficient transportation of these goods is crucial for our economy. We need to invest in all modes of transportation for freight, including roads, rail, grade crossings, to reduce bottlenecks. But, Madam Speaker, this nation does not focus enough resources on freight policy and goods movement. We don't have a national freight plan to guide us. According to Robert Fuentes at the Brookings Institute, the nation has no comprehensive strategy or plan for the maintenance and development of transportation assets related to international freight movement. The country's freight transportation industry is highly decentralized, with private operators owning almost all of the trucks and rails, and the public sector owning the roads, airports, and waterway rights. And unlike our international peers, such as Germany, Canada, Australia, the United States doesn't have a unified strategy that aligns disparate owners and interests around national economic obje objectives. Madam Speaker, without a national plan, we have bottlenecks transporting our goods. For example, the goods that leave the Port of Los Angeles take 48 hours to arrive in Chicago and take another 30 hours to travel across the city. What does this bottleneck and others like it mean? It means higher costs for consumers, more congestion, more pollution, less jobs. We need to stop this piecemeal system and develop a national plan. It's so crucial that we develop this plan now because the amount of freight will increase drastically in the next 20 years. In Southern California, it's expected to triple. In addition, this administration wants to double the exports by 2014. And I think we need to have an efficient system to export our products overseas. This will provide opportunities for our small businesses. And we need to prepare for that increase. According to the Federal Highway Administration, the U.S. Surface Transportation Network, which includes rail and highway, is reaching or has reached capacity in many areas. The congestion largely stems from the lack of capacity to meet traffic demand and lack of infrastructure. A U.S. Department of Transportation report, Freight Transportation Improvements and the Economy, estimates the cost of carrying freight on the highway system at between $25 and $200 an hour. Unexpected delays. The gentlewoman will suspend. The gentlewoman may proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 
Unexpected delays can increase the cost of transporting goods by 50 to 250 percent. Because the supply chain is a network of retailers, distributors, transporters, storage facilities, and suppliers that participate in the sale, delivery, and production of a particular product, congestion re resulting in unreliable trip times and missed deliveries can have major business implications, which adds costs at every link of the supply chain. If the transportation function is efficient, manufacturing and retail firms can carry less inventory because they can rely on goods being delivered when and where they are needed. If the transportation system is congested and unreliable, a firm must carry more inventory to ensure production processes are uninterrupted and the availability of goods is maintained. Carrying inventory is not free. Not only is it a firm's capital tied up in the inventory, but it must be stored and insured. This model of business carrying more inventories to buffer transportation unreliability costs money to the companies and ultimately to the consumer. You know, one of the reasons that I like working on ports and freight policy is because it's a bipartisan issue. It's something we can find common middle ground on. For example, Bob Poole of the Libertarian Reason Foundation stated, Goods movement infrastructure has not gotten enough attention in recent decades, either at the federal level or in the transportation plans of urban area, metropolitan planning organizations. The larger question before us is what the federal government direct role should be. Mr. Poole continues, despite my general decentralist leanings, I agree that facilitating free flow of commerce with the world and among states is one of the tasks the Constitution gives to the federal government. So, he says, I'm favorable to, favorable to the idea of the federal government making strategic investments in critical corridors and key nodes in the goods movement in system. And obviously, this needs to involve all the modes that make economic sense for shippers to move cargo. What, what organizations support a national freight plan? In addition to many transportation and port organizations, a national freight plan is supported by the United States Chamber of Commerce and the National Retail Federation. The Chamber of Commerce recently sent a letter this month to the conference committee stating, the reliable and timely movement of goods is critical to U.S. economic health. Unfortunately, the condition and capacity of the transportation transportation system has failed to keep up with the growth in trade volume and freight movement. Congestion caused by bottlenecks threatened to choke future economic growth. The Chamber believes the Senate passed bill includes strong provisions to establish a freight program that would improve regional and national freight movement by targeting investments and improvements that would demonstrably facilitate the movement of freight such as tra truck only lanes, railway, highway grade separations, improvements to freight intermodal connectors. As part of the freight stakeholder coalition, the re retailer stated, substantial investment in the nation's freight transportation system must be given a high priority. Without the ability to quickly and cost effectively move goods in and out and through the United States, America will not be able to maintain our high standard of living and high employment levels. I have also have letters of support from the American Trucking Association and the American Association of Port Authorities in support of this motion. And I have many other uh, supporters. I'd be happy to uh, read those if you would like. We also know that uh, congestion, especially truck congestion on our highways, causes air pollution. In my part of the country, South Coast Air Quality Management District said that diesel emissions are responsible for 71% of the major pollutants in the region. This means more asthma in our children and more cancer. Eliminating congestion will help improve air quality and our na nation's health. Also, America's farmers would benefit from a national freight policy. Not only do our America's farmers provide food in our grocery stores and on our tables, but they feed the world as well. America is the world's breadbasket. 
The U.S. is the world's top wheat exporter, and all of that grain needs to be transported from America's heartland to our ports. It is crucial that we have the infrastructure to transport our goods from California or the Midwest to export them. In conclusion, last week, the Ports Caucus met with the Transportation Secretary LaHood. He said the department was beginning to plan a national freight policy, but that Congress needed to prioritize goods movement. This is our chance. The last transportation bill was passed seven years ago. We cannot wait another seven years before we make a national commitment and a priority for a freight policy in this country. I urge my colleagues to vote for my motion, and I reserve the balance of my time. The